Hello everyone, this is Nat Narsani back in and welcome back to again. We're now going to interrogate Alfred Brown on the height of his century. I don't know what the hell am I talking about, but yeah, let's just get along. Did you kill him? Did you kill Sam? I didn't kill him, I swear. But I, you knocked him out. I moved the body. That's all I did. Honest. Cops knew that I had an alibi when the murder happened. Gotta believe me. Why was the body touched? I wanted to check Sam's wallet. I was wondering if he really had that lotto ticket in there. It was for my kid. Did you take the lotto ticket? Yeah. I knew that he'd pull a winning ticket in his wallet. Sam told me at the front desk that he'd won the big one. That guy was on cloud nine. He was in heaven. I don't know why is it called cloud nine. So when I heard that, I, uh, I asked him if he'd loan me the money for my son's surgery. And you know what he'd say? Oh, he wouldn't. He would not lend you. That kid's gonna croak anyway. No use wasting good money on the last cost. Oh, you ass! Oh, that's a really bad guy. Besides, I'd say a guy like you wouldn't pay me back in a lifetime. Oh my god, that guy's an ass. You don't realize how steamed I was. It's true that Sergio had a slim chance of success. With the money I made, I'd never be able to pay him back. But I had to help my son at any cost. I decided to beg Sam for that money no matter how foolish it looked. I went looking for him at our private lounge which was room 315. When I got there he was already dead. I took a good look at the body and did something terrible. I sold my soul to the devil. You did. What do you mean by that? I moved the body to get the wallet out of his jacket pocket and I swiped the lotto ticket. After that, I threw the empty wallet into the river. Then I cashed in the ticket, got the money, and my son got his surgery. Surgery saved my boy's life and he grew up healthy and happy. Even today, the kids tell me it's all thanks to you, Pop. It's all thanks to you. Every time he tells me that, I get sick to my stomach. Every single day for the past 19 years, I think about what happened on that night. I can still see it as clear as day. My own reflection in that mirror. Sam's wallet clenched in my bloody hands and my pitiful face in that mirror. How did you manage to wipe the blood off? That's what really happened, I swear. I'll be damned. Took the lotto ticket out of the sand's wallet, and that's it. Which means one thing. Face the sealer I saw in the vision couldn't have been Alfred Brown. Better get back to the hotel and take another look at the past. Yep, now we can get a better look at that vision. I go to the cops. I'll turn my in in for what I did back then. Uh, call the cops, Kate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll get scolded. Hotel Miranda. Where's Matthias then? <laughs> What's the plan, Jay? I go back in there, swipe my ass in there, solve the case. <clears throat> I've got to piece together what I've seen in there and retrace the killer's actions. Something tells me I find out what happened after that. I'm dead. Be careful. Be careful. I will. Wait for me here. If I don't come out after an hour, call me. I mean, not call me. Get me! Do I have to talk? Same thing on the vision of the past. Where did I do the vision? I'm going to uncover the truth of the past. I'll be waiting right here. I don't get to walk to the room. I have to click vision to go to the room. Really? 
The eye of providence awakes that sense. Now to trace the incident from 19 years ago. Good nobody removed the things from what I did. Nice music. Now the truth will be revealed. Once all the pieces of the vision are reflected how they were in the past, that's the pieces in order to in which the criminal performed them to replay the past. What really happened at the scene? Okay. So what happened first? This one. First one. Um, what's the second one? The first one or the uh, one on the right? Okay, let's say the lamp. I can always redo it, right? Uh, yeah, and then the guy whacked him in the in front of the mirror, and he's dead. Yeah. And then, third one. Whack me in the head, baby. With the wrench. Why are they killing each other again? And the last. Good God. Don't look at me now. At least he's not getting blood stained. Wait, you are looking at me, are you? Oh god. Wait, aren't you the other murder victim? Wait, you're the other murdered victim, weren't you? But you're dead! Was that really progress? No, I don't think so. I've seen that guy before. He's the next killed guy. How'd he go? I saw the killer's face. Really? Hey, that's it. What's it? The killer, I remember where I've seen his face before. Yeah, the vampire looking guy. He was Providence's second victim. He looks like a vampire's wear. He looks like a vampire. Goodness God. Day four. Already? I had another dream about that day. I saw the house going up in flames. I could hardly breathe all that smoke. I was scared and I cried out. Help Danny. Please, somebody help Danny. But Danny was nowhere to be found and the house was burned to the ground. Then it dawned on me that I was the only one left. Who the heck is Danny? And then when I woke up, my partner was right there saying, Bonjour, good morning. <clears throat> Yo, are you sure about this? Positive. I must have overlooked those pictures from the pic I must have looked over those pictures from the investigation a hundred times. 
A vision I saw yesterday at Veranda Hotel made it crystal clear who the killed Sam Kalish. It was the second victim of the second. It was the victim of the second Providence murder. Sarah Smith. If what you're saying is true, then it's a mess. I know. Does this mean Charles Smith is Providence? How can he be that? It's hard to say. After all, Charles Smith was killed right after he was murdered. After he murdered Sam, sorry. Anyway, what we can learn from that is there was more than one killer involved in the murders. I can't think of any other explanation. So there's actually more than one Providence. It's certainly possible and improbable, but possible. We need to hurry up before we uh, figure out what happened 19 years ago. Before the next one dies, our new discovery is bound to be a significant piece of that puzzle. And then the next guy dies. I just couldn't figure out where that piece fits and what it tells us. Right. That left. How about we move, go over about Charles Smith's murder again before we head out. I hate that. How my hair. <clears throat> Alright, give me a rundown. Happened on March 3, 1991, only three days after Sam was killed. Victim was a taxi driver, Charles Smith. He was found shot to death in the parking garage. The weapon was a determined to be a .22 caliber gun. At first it was thought to be a burglary, but no money was taken from the taxi. Iowa's provenance was found next to Mr. Smith's body. This is what led police to believe that it was a serial killer connected to Sam's death. Along with the letter regarding the crime which was sent to the newspaper. There were no witnesses and the murder weapon was never found and the case remains unsolved to this day. Great. Until today. I found it just yesterday. Give me an info on where Charles Smith was murdered. Grand Park Garage is where it happened. That's the city-owned park garage, parking garage right next to the Grand Park. It's a basement floor. It has a basement floor and two floors above that. Taxi driver was uh, the taxi that dri Charles was driving and using was parked on the basement floor. Were there any clues left at the crime scene? Nothing significant besides the eye of providence. There's a cigarette butt found on the ground ne near the taxi though. The traces of the victim's saliva were found on it. Oh, and four bullet holes were found at the scene. Three in the wall and one on the ceiling near the fluorescent light. What wall? Anything else I need to know? Local police set up an office exclusively for that investigation into the Providence murder after that happened. More investigations were put on the case, including a new lead detective. Wait a minute, you're saying a detective other than Philip Robbins was put in charge after the second murder? Uh-huh. The name is Burnett Johnson. Why do I know that name? Good question. Why do you know? He's the president of Johnson & Co. What the heck? The largest business in Clockford. That can't be a coincidence. Ah, I can't do it anymore. The time's up. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, to see the next part. Just simply wave your one and hit the like button and subscribe button to watch the next part. Until then, this is Natnar signing off. Bye.